Eight, essential breakup boundaries. Why do you need to set boundaries with a former partner, a former lover, or an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend after a breakup? Hi, I'm Jessica from Jessica Adele Consulting Services. Happy New Year to you all, wherever you are across the world. In this segment today, I'll outline eight essential boundaries that you do need to implement following a breakup from your former partner, ex-lover, or ex-boyfriend or girlfriend. Part of the healing process after a relationship breakdown is to implement strong boundaries with your ex in order to keep your self-esteem and confidence intact. It is an act of self-love to put in place healthy boundaries when a relationship ends so that you don't experience an additional layer of self-inflicted suffering and pain. Because as it is, you're already experiencing the pain of grieving the relationship. So, with these tips today that I'll share with you, most of them are inspired by a blog called baggagereclaim.co.uk. Of course, with my additional professional and personal take on the subject matter. Revisit this video when you need a gentle reminder or when you're in a weak spot during your no contact phase with the other party. Check out my other videos on this YouTube channel if you would like tips on building self-esteem and freeing yourself from other toxic relationships. Stay tuned. Okay, so the first breakup boundary. If you've been rejected by another person, start learning to accept the fact that it was their decision to end the relationship with you. I know this sounds harsh, but it is what it is then try to work through the process of emotionally detaching from that person and learning to move on. There's no point in negotiating any sentiments with that person once they have offered you a clear explanation on their perceived feelings and reasons for why the relationship has broken down and ended for them. Keep your dignity intact and walk away. So don't go back Pling. Of course I say this considering you had attempted or the other party was as well willing to attempt some type of relationship counselling or couples therapy. And then after that it was clear to both parties that the relationship cannot be salvaged from both ends. So then what's in it for you there? Your work is to accept that the relationship has run its course and try to move on from it and go through the grieving process. There is nothing worse than trying to pitch yourself to someone who had rejected you. Plus, why would you do that? There's so many people out there for you in the future to meet once you've gone through the healing journey. Second breakup essential boundary to implement is after you've experienced the pain of rejection, don't hang out with your ex after the breakup and don't let them linger back into your life post breakup, especially during the early phase. This is slippery slope territory. Give yourself enough distance from them to heal. Of course, if you have children, then that's another matter. Keep your interactions professional, limited to a business type of relationship with the other party. Don't let someone breadcrumb you after a breakup or try to downgrade the nature of your initial relationship after they've broken up with you. So what I'm referring here is to sort of downgrade the relationship from, from being in a committed relationship to, uh, say, a mistress or a fuck buddy. If in the future you've healed from the breakup and you both agree that you're amicable and that you're destined to be friends together, and that you're destined to stay in each other's lives, then that's something you can work towards. But that's after you've gone through your healing journey and that person has to show, show you that they're genuinely a friendship type and that they deserve, they're friend worthy and that they deserve to be in your life. Okay, the third breakup essential boundary Give yourself permission to grieve the loss of the relationship and to honour the no contact phase with the other party. 
That essentially means it's important to implement social media and physical boundaries with the other person. So don't go checking up on them to see if they've moved on to another relationship and start monitoring and stalking the blossoming of their new relationship highlights on social media. That's not going to help you at all. Um, if anything, it will put a bit more blocks on your healing journey. So that's self-inflicted pain again, and you really don't need to make things harder on yourself to make get yourself angry by watching your ex's new relationship blossom there's no need for that the fourth tip essential boundary to implement after a breakup is be wary of lazy communication from your ex-partner what do i mean by that lazy communication could be random texting uh, or sporadic messages sent to you say at 1 a.m 12 12 a.m or whatever time after long periods of no contact where your ex says words like I miss you or how are you doing or how how are things going you you're looking good in that photo so that random messages with no follow-up and um, just haphazard texting I means to be honest with you if your ex really misses you they will make that known they will come and approach you and if they really want you back in their life, they will really make that known. Usually these lazy types of communication is an instrument or a way for him or her to sort of keep you in the loop or feed their ego, especially after the break breakup. So don't try to fill their ego as well. Um, or don't engage in those messages because that's another way to keep them alive in your energy and you really don't want to do that you want something a bit more meaningful if there's a chance or an opportunity for you to get back together in the future the fifth boundary tip to implement it goes without saying do not sleep with your ex during the no contact phase if you really want to move on and decide to be on your own or move into another relationship Sex with your former partner will create an attachment. It will end up wounding you and confusing you. And if anything, give you false fantasy and false hope that there'll be something more than just sex. Sex with an ex-partner is an emotionally loaded experience. You'll end up feeling disappointed and often demoralized. Sex will not lure the other party back into a committed relationship that has no foundation besides sex. So if you do think that way, you're guaranteed to end up disappointed. The sixth essential boundary to implement is if someone has rejected you, don't bombard them with your love, with your affection and care or attention. That person made the decision to decide not to be with you, right? So it's their decision. Why would you act in a way that's dishonoring to your self-esteem and confidence by giving them any attention? Seven, take super care of yourself and practice a lot of self-care, especially right after the breakup, because you're going to be feeling sentiments of being rejected, hurt, um, and that would really have impacted uh, negatively on your self-esteem and confidence. So, Amp up your self-care routines, do your exercises, eat clean, healthy, um, make sure that you're getting enough sleep, do your yoga, get your hair done, get your manicures done or whatever, whatever floats your boat, lotion your body, perfume your body, whatever you need to do. Also look after yourself internally, emotionally, so make sure you're journaling, that you're say speaking to a therapist, a coach, to your friends, go for massages, give yourself that care and attention that you really deserve. Okay, so there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to self-care, especially after a breakup. A lot of those sources are available online, you can check them out. And also it doesn't harm to educate yourself in this phase and um, try to have that forward focus of looking at building your life and moving 
very strongly and confidently into that next phase of your life. And the eighth essential boundary tip is notice if you're actively engaging in any obsessive thinking about your ex. All right, so if you've established that the relationship is irretrievable and it and there's nothing else you can do to get back together and both parties don't want to or one party doesn't want to then try to educate yourself about um, other things other interests or personal development so try to understand yourself develop that self-awareness um, if you're actively engaging in obsessive thinking about your ex-partner have a look and see um, whether you're exhibiting traits of codependency or other obsessive behavioral and cognitive addictions and work on improving those uh, qualities in yourself. So bring the focus back to you and work on building yourself. Obviously, you don't need to go through this journey alone. There's a lot of people out there going through breakups as well. It's just a matter of finding the right community and the right tribe to support you during your grieving phase from that relationship. All right, um, and with these eight essential boundary tips, I hope that you found this video valuable. If you did, please like, share, subscribe or comment and let me know if, you, if this resonated with you. Um, and also feel free to share it with someone you think needs to hear the message today. And I wish you a happy, safe and strong 2021 and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you and bye bye for now.